Welcome, we are Snapper Engineering, and this is our final site presentation for Civil Engineering Senior Design at Boise State University. Snapper is a five-person design firm. Jackson Smart is our geotechnical engineer and AutoCAD specialist. Riley Roppel is our hydrologist and also handled visualization techniques via Revit. Kaylee Nelson is our structural engineer. Danny Abedi is our transportation engineer. And I'm Josh Petrie, who will later present potential green and sustainable solutions. Snapper was hired to develop a one acre industrial lot in Nampa, Idaho, with the primary element being a two story industrial structure with a surface footprint of about 6,500 square feet. The surface footprint includes concrete slabs for unloading raw materials through garage doors and loading finished product under a single overhang. The lot must accommodate light and heavy commercial truck loading for vehicles with up to three axles, and all stormwater retention is required to stay on the site. This is the owner's building footprint, which includes five separate concrete slabs for deliveries and foot traffic. The 22 by 28 foot slab on the bottom left is for the overhang and loading. The 10 foot wide slabs at top center and bottom right are for unloading through the garage doors and the two 4.8 foot wide slabs at top right and bottom center are for foot traffic. The main building entrance is on the top right of this picture. And this is a snapshot of the original site plan. The adjacent river is west to the left of the site and the sidewalk and street are visible to the east. At this time, Jackson Smart will take over and discuss the geotechnical elements of our design. For the geotechnical portion of this project, we designed wall and isolated footings to dissipate the loads from the building. We also added two to two and a half feet of soil to elevate the structure above the floodplain. For the footing designs, the bearing capacity and the settlement were considered for the sizing. In order to accomplish this, we gathered information from the soil through borings. From this, we were able to obtain information regarding the soil types, friction angles, elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, and other pertinent information. We were able to keep the max differential settlement underneath 1.5 inches. We also ensured that the area for the footings was adequate not to cause bearing failure to the soil underneath. This slide is an example of one of our five by five foot footings. Uh, in this footing, we have number six bars placed 12 inches on center. We also maintained three inches of clear cover. Our reinforcing bars were placed at a depth of nine inches. In regards to the hydraulic design, it was asked that all stormwater was to stay on site. This helps keep any drainage water from flowing into the river when it is not properly filtered. A pond was suggested as a solution. The snapper team concluded that a seepage bed would be an improvement for a couple of reasons. This helps keep the trucks to have more mobility throughout the site, along with keeping the site aesthetically pleasing during the dry months, since the pond would dry up during the summer. The seepage bed is below ground, so you never have to see an empty pond. There is also added trees al along the east and west side of the site, including the side that the river is on nearby. These trees, along with the, the designed green roof, will help improve the air and water quality of the area. The trees will also add added protection for keeping water on the site. The seepage bed is located on the east side of the site. The seepage bed is calculated to be 83 feet long and 15 feet wide. As you can see, the depth of the seepage bed is six and a half feet down to the drain rock, along with another foot and a half of filtered sand just above the water, groundwater elevation. There is an 18 inch diameter perforated pipe that runs along the seepage bed depositing water. This is a quick visualization of the seepage bed underground and the picture of the pavement was removed so you can see underneath.
For the structural design component of this project, a steel braced framing system was chosen. The columns and beams were designed to support the roof, floors, mezzanine, and walls. One-way slabs were used to support floor loadings for the second floor and mezzanine. The slabs were designed to support heavy equipment loading. The decking and roofing materials were chosen from Volcraft catalogs to accommodate a flat roof design for the anticipated loadings in Nampa, Idaho. The anticipated roof loadings did not include the sustainable alternatives such as a green roof or the addition of solar panels. All designs followed ASCE 710 codes as well as the AISC Steel Construction Manual and the ACI 318-14 code for structural concrete. The structural design criteria included load combinations based on anticipated weather for NAMP Idaho. Strength and serviceability were also addressed. The deflections of all applicable members were limited to a 360th of the member length in order to limit additional strain on the structural components as well as address the comfort of the users of the building. The continuous load path concept was pivotal to the design of this building. All loads were transferred from the roof down and dissipated in the foundation. Redundancy was key for this section of the project to maintain the safety and security of all users as well. A factor of safety of two was used in the roof design and decking decisions. Safety decisions such as railings around the mezzanine were considered in order to achieve a safe and workable space. 18 columns were used for the design of this 6,624 square foot building. Column sizes vary widely depending on the height and the loading of the column. The slabs were designed with a thickness of 7 inches for the mezzanine shown on the right, with joists running every 10 feet and 2 inches north to south. For the second floor, the slabs were also 7 inches thick with joists running every 10 feet from east to west. The slabs include temperature and shrinkage reinforcement of number 4 bars at a spacing of 12 inches on center. Number 5 bars were used for tensile reinforcement in the slabs at a spacing of 12 inches on center as well. In this model of the building, 22K6 joists are shown supporting the roof and transferring the loads down to the beams, the sizes of which are dependent on the span of the building, ranging from W18 by 40 for the entrance roof, W24 by 62 for the roof covering the second floor section. Transportation design for this project pertains to the driveway, pedestrian walkways, loading areas, parking and pavement design. Based on the site size and considering the traffic flow this site will generate, Snapper decided it was suitable to have just one access point, a 30-foot driveway that will accommodate all vehicle types entering and exiting the site. This driveway will have a concrete strength of 3500 psi. It will be a curb return type with a maximum slope of 2% at grade breaks. With this design, 98% of the runoff could be retained onto the site. The location of the driveway in proximity to the nearest, to the nearest driveway meets the city of Nampa's driveway spacing requirements. Another reason Snapper agreed to have one driveway is because research shows that having more than one access point on a site of this size may increase the number of accidents. The pedestrian walkway was designed to meet the needs and expectations of people who walk on and around the premises. As shown in the summary video, a 5 foot wide paved walkway goes around the entire building allowing people of all abilities to easily and comfortably move about the premises. For the main office entrance, there is a marked pedestrian walkway that extends to and from the existing street sidewalk that is located east of the property. All walkways meet ADA accessibility guidelines. Our client requested eight on-site parking, on parking, on parking lots. So, to meet the client's expectations, we designed three typical parallel parking stalls 
on the building frontage, one of which typical accessible one of which is a typical accessible stall. For the other five, there are diagonal parking stalls on the north side of the building for one of which an electrical charging station is provided. All parking stalls are 9 by 20 feet and will be attached to the pedestrian walkway. For our loading areas, we provided more than sufficient turning radiuses for all tracks that will be ex expected to deliver and load materials. For two axle and three axle tracks, we provide a turning radius of 40 and 52 feet respectively. These turning radiuses exceed the minimum turning radius for this kind of tracks and gives enough room for the drivers to operate. Our pavement design was based on the anticipated size of tracks and the amount of expected traffic. The, pav the pavement equivalent single axle load is 500,000 pounds. This, will, this is the equivalent to the traffic index of 8.3. We use the R value of 80 for the aggregate base and 60 for the granular base. This resulted in a total pavement size of 22 inches, 22.5 inches exact. This includes 3 inches of asphalt mix, 6.5 inches of aggregate mix and 13 inches of, sub, of subgrade mix. The, the, the results are within the acceptable pavement design range and meet the city of Nampa pavement standards. For green and sustainable solutions, a premier benchmark is LEED certification for building design and construction, which has four scales, certified, silver, gold, and platinum. Many elements would be in the hands of the owner and contractors, but Snapper's suggestions alone should make gold certification readily attainable. We'll focus on five particular parameters, location and transportation, sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, and materials and resources. One key step toward LEED certification is energy optimization, and this can be done by utilizing solar paneling on the roof and LED lighting at ground level. Solar panels and framing only take about two to four pounds per square foot, which means this element could easily be added to at least part of the roof with minimal effect on roof loading. The key here would be to generate enough energy to run the facility by day, then be a net zero facility when it goes on grid by night. The panels, along with any green roof elements and or painting any exposed roof elements a lighter shade, would contribute to heat island reduction. The green roof, tree lines, and landscaping, which are shown in our renderings, contribute to rainwater management by trapping the runoff, and they can even allow for indoor water use reduction by being used where non-portable water is permitted. Planting native species will allow for a reduction in the outdoor water use required to irrigate. Our site encourages multimodal transportation, including pedestrian and bicycle traffic, and adding an electric charging station to one of the parking spots would potentially incentivize green vehicle utilization. Having only eight parking spots greatly reduces our parking footprints which further persuades employees and visitors to come on site through environmentally conscious means. The final element we can try to control with our design is the materials and resources. The site requires the import of soil to raise the overall elevation, but on-site soils are still utilized to complement the imported material. Our reinforced concrete can not only come from recycled materials, but it can also include cement from a local source like Ash Grove in Eastern Oregon, which is renowned in the industry for its proactive approach to carbon reduction in the cement making process. Our steel and asphalt could also come from reclaimed materials. Electric arc furnace, or EAF steel making, accounted for 70% of American steel production in 2019 and is a near carbon neutral way to produce fresh steel from scrap. Reclaimed asphalt pavement, or RAP, 
can be remixed and used in areas that don't require extremely high loading, and reclaimed asphalt shingles, RAS, have even become a source for new pavement. In summary, here's a CAD drawing of our final design, which includes the column locations in green, grading in blue, the seepage basin and manhole covers along the perimeter, along with where soil samples were taken in red. And here's a top view of our completed site via Revit. Notice the green roof along with the trees on the east and west ends of the lot. The overhang for truck loading is on the south end and the single driveway on the southeast corner can accommodate heavy trucks entering and exiting simultaneously. Bike racks and benches on the street side encourage alternative modes of transportation, and there's a pedestrian walkway right outside the entrance on the northeast corner of the building. There's plenty of room for trucks to drive around the building perimeter as needed, so traffic should be unimpeded at all times. Our ADA accessible parking spot is nearest to the main entrance, and an EV charging station could easily be placed in the spot immediately next to it. But the best way to see our design isn't from the top down. It's to actually go through the site. We leave you with this Revit video of our final site design. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you.